All right, what's going on guys? Today we're gonna to be looking at Blue White Blades. It's an extreme budget deck, it's under two tickets. I actually priced it before going into the deck tech this time. It's 1.98 tickets, so yeah, for two tickets, basically nothing. We have a fairly competitive deck. Now I say competitive, it's competitive in the tournament practice room. I don't know if I'd wanna play it in proper leagues and stuff like that. But I've been, you know, having a lot of success with this in the tournament practice room. It's been a lot of fun to play, and it's definitely a unique deck. So, let's take a look at it. First off, the deck is built around Steel of the Godhead. So, Steel of the Godhead says that if Enchanted Creature is white, it gets plus one, plus one, and lifelink. And if it's blue, it gets plus one, plus one, and unblockable. Every single creature in this deck is multicolored. So, we are guaranteed to get plus two, plus two lifelink and unblockable out of this that's actually really strong i mean lifelink and unblockable means that you're just going to be creating a huge life point swing every single turn on turn three if we have a steal of the godhead we are very consistently going to be hitting for four unblockable and gaining for a life every single turn now obviously this is an aura so it is vulnerable to removal but that's why we're in blue we're going to be playing a lot of counter spells the idea behind this deck is to get a steal of the godhead on a creature and then protect it with counter spells and just wail away with it so moving on to the creatures and this is where the deck gets its name we're playing four esper storm blades and four bant sure blades you no know, because they're blades and steel of the godhead was also a sword so you know blue white blades that's what we're going with here but both of these are two mana two ones which isn't great but so long as we control a multicolor permanent they each become three twos with an ability in the case of esper stormblade it's a two mana three two with flying and bant sureblade is a two mana three two with first strike so this is why we don't need steel of the godhead esper stormblade you know if we get that out on turn two and follow it up with pretty much any creature on the deck we're hitting with three flying on turn three forward. So it actually does feel kind of like Delver of Secrets. Obviously, it's not as good. You know, we have to pay one more for it. But the point is, you know, we have a three power flyer very consistently in the early game. And that usually accounts for quite a bit of damage. It takes a while for your opponent to kind of catch up to that. That's why Delver of Secrets is so good. Plus the fact that it's a one mana three power flyer. But in this case, we have a two mana three power flyer most of the time. So it's pretty good. Uh, Banisher Blade is good too. It, I mean, it's got first strike. It's usually not going to be blocked for the first couple turns at least. And the important thing about these is that they only care about multicolored permanents, which means that Steel of the Godhead counts. It's, it is a multicolored permanent. So if we play like any of these blades with a Steel of the Godhead on turn three, we're swinging for five unblockable lifelink on turn three. So that's going to put us at 25 and our opponent at 15 on turn 3. It puts us in a very good place. And that's assuming they can remove the creature. If they can't, then we you know they're going to 10 and we're going to 30 on turn 4. That's how this deck feels. I mean, we just we throw a Steel of the Godhead on one of these creatures and it just it starts blowing the opponent out. So backing up the blades are Ethercast Knight and Somnomancer. We're going to be playing 3 each of these. So the important thing about these guys is that first off they are multicolored permanents so they are going to activate the blades built in abilities. They're also both blue and white so we can throw a steel of the godhead on them if necessary. And you know they both kind of work pretty well with what we're trying to do here. So Ethercast Knight is a 2 mana 1-3 which is kind of not great but it does have Exalted. Which makes a, you know, steal the god-headed blade even more powerful. It's going to give it an extra one. We're going to be dealing six and gaining six every turn. It also just works really well. Like, say, for example, we have an Esper Stormblade on turn two. We follow that up with an Ethercast Knight. And we're attacking for four flying every turn. So, yeah, not bad at all, really. Somnomancer is just a tempo-based card. It's a two-mana, two-one. Comes into play, taps a creature. It's good if our opponent has blockers with flying. It's good if we have a Banisher Blade. We can throw this, tap a creature, attack for three. You know, that's kind of the idea here. We're in blue, but we're playing a kind of aggressive, kind of beat down type of deck. Next up, we have the counter spells. We're going to be playing four counter spells, four mana leaks. Again, I, I'm very important here. This is not a control deck. You do not want to play these in the early game. You know, if you get two counter spells and some lands, you know, it might be tempting to just start countering everything. 
That's not the idea here. We really want these to protect our combo, so to speak. We want to protect whatever creature has a steel of the godhead on it. Doesn't matter if it's on a blade or a somnomancer. Just if we have a steel of the godhead on anything, these are just going to protect it. We just want to put a bubble around that creature and make sure that it doesn't die. We're also going to be playing two Journey to Nowhere and two Oblivion Rings. This is just removal. We have two of each. We have um, one more of each in the sideboard so we can, you know, shift into whatever we need. But, you know, it's just removal. Get a big creature out of the battlefield. You know, if our opponent is relying on an artifact or enchantment, you know, we have Oblivion Ring. And then, you know, we can shift into whatever we need in game two and three. So you always need to play removal. And, you know, this is the go-to for white and popper. And then finally, we're just going to be playing four Preordains and four Ponder. Not much to say here, we're just looking to dig through our deck. Find Steel of the Godhead, find, you know, the Blades. Just dig, find stuff that we need, find counter spells if we need those to protect a Steel of the Godhead that's already on the battlefield. This just gives us a way to just, you know, search through our deck, find our stuff. Not too complicated there. And that's basically it. Yeah, it's not that complicated, is it? We also have the mana base here. We have three Tranquil Coves, three Azorius Chancery. And we'll be playing a pile of basics as well because it is popper. So nothing too crazy going on with the mana base. Just, you know, pretty standard, pretty standard popper mana base. And then a super quick look at the sideboard. We're going to be playing two Essence Scatter, one Negate, and two Hindering Light. This is just so we can tailor our control spells to our opponent's deck. Hindering Light is pretty sweet. You know, our biggest issue is, you know, control spells hitting our creatures with um, Steel of the Godhead. So Hindering Light, being able to counter that spell and also drawing a card, it's kind of just the best thing ever. We've also got one Journey to Nowhere and one Oblivion Ring. Again, so we can shift those ratios as we see fit. We also have four Deputy of Acquittals. Really good against Black Control. It's a 2 mana 2-2 two, two with Flash. It's blue and white, so it's a multicolored permanent and it can be enchanted with a Steel of the Godhead. And when it comes into play, we bounce a creature back to our hand. So we can just use that to respond to removal. It doesn't save Steel of the Godhead, so it's not perfect. But it does function pretty well in the early game. We're also going to be playing two Fragmentize because artifacts. And two Leave No Trace because enchantments. So be careful with Leave No Trace. It can hit our own enchantment. We definitely don't want to target anything white. So you could replace those with, you know, Disenchant or whatever. I prefer Leave No Trace just because most of the time my biggest issue is with Bogles, and you know, this just wipes out Bogles. It's really nice against Bogles, so I'm gonna be playing this, but you know, Disenchant works fine too. And yep, that's it. Literally, that's it. You no, know, the idea is extremely simple. Just get a blade, get a Steel of the Godhead on it, and protect it with counter spells while you will away at your opponent. There's not a lot of complexity here. It's a very simple deck to play. Literally, you're just looking to enchant a creature with Steel of the Godhead and then protect it with counter spells. That's pretty much it. It's not that complicated. And, you know, again, a two-ticket deck, 1.98 tickets. And I don't know, again, I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. I don't know if I've ever seen a deck built around Steel of the Godhead. Maybe it's an older deck that I've just never seen before, but I haven't seen anything like it. And it's been pretty fun to play. So, yeah, I'm going to be playing five games with this in the tournament practice room. If you want to see those games, as always, check the description. There should be a playlist, and I will see you in the first match.